After a few years of custom scripts and hacking Macs to semi-successfully use eGPUs, our long-awaited promise of the easy-to-use eGPU is mostly here. Today, we're taking a look at AMD's WX9100 graphics card used inside of Sonnet's eGFX breakaway box. This is a high-end professional workstation card that supports ECC memory and double precision computation, which is a necessity for specific applications that have a very large or a high amount of calculations and can't afford a single error that will end up compounding over time. These workstation specs and features add up to a graphics card costing $1,500, which definitely seems high if you're a gamer, but to those buying workstation cards, it's not a bad buy. Along with that, the fact that you can now easily connect a professional workstation card to a MacBook Pro to do this type of computation is nothing short of impressive. We'll be comparing this combo to the best GPU available in our i9 MacBook Pro as well as our previously reviewed Blackmagic eGPU. I do want to mention that AMD did send out two of these cards, but we had some issues getting both of them to work properly at the same time on our Mac, so this time we'll be focusing on just one. I also want to mention that we did use our set eGPU script that we found online to enable all of our applications to use the external graphics cards. Starting off with Geekbench 4's OpenCL test, the WX9100 scored more than double that of our MacBook's internal graphics and a bit higher than Blackmagic's unit. Doing a quick benchmark run in Unigen's heaven, the WX9100 once again performs more than twice as well as the 560X and about 45% faster than the Blackmagic eGPU. Moving on to video editing tasks, we first ran the Bruce X benchmark for Final Cut Pro, which mostly taxes the graphics cards. Here, once again, we saw more than doubling of performance. Running the Final Cut 10 stabilization filter, the WX9100 eGPU performed the task in just 7 seconds compared to 13 seconds on the others. In DaVinci Resolve, this task went from 28 seconds to 14 seconds. Rendering a 5 minute 4K H.264 project, we didn't see any improvement in Final Cut Pro and the Blackmagic eGPU actually slowed it down. In Resolve 15, both eGPUs made this task significantly slower. We think this is because of two reasons. First off, the highest end graphics available in the 2018 15-inch MacBook Pro is already fast enough to keep up with the CPU. On top of that, there is some bottlenecking having to send the data through the Thunderbolt 3 port not only to the GPU to be rendered, but also back to our software. As we move on to much tougher codecs like Canon Cinema Raw Lite, where our internal graphics card is a huge bottleneck, we see some major improvements even with short one minute projects. Not only did our render time go from almost four times as long than the project itself to less than half the time, but our timeline performance went from an unusable 20 frames per second to 55 frames per second, which is a massive improvement. In DaVinci Resolve, we went from 20 minutes to just eight minutes with the WX9100. Testing red raw files, we don't see much change in Final Cut Pro, mainly because our CPU is the bottleneck. DaVinci Resolve puts a heavier load on graphics, so we see about 60% faster speeds with a WX9100. Adding noise reduction is often needed with raw footage, and it usually makes anything but the highest end computers choke up. With temporal noise reduction added in Resolve, our WX9100 was close to three times faster than the 560X, and the timeline had very few drop frames, making it workable where the MacBook Pro's integrated graphics wasn't. To finish off our testing, we used Blender to test 3D rendering capabilities. Here, the WX9100 is more than five times faster than the best internal graphics available on our MacBook Pro. In conclusion, the WX9100 is a very powerful card that can make some professional tasks go from previously unusable to a fairly good experience. On top of that, tasks that require dual precision GPUs and ECC memory are now possible without purchasing a dedicated workstation computer. We at Apple Insider are very excited about the possibilities that eGPUs now offer and are looking forward to even better support in macOS Mojave. If you enjoyed this video, like it and hit that subscribe button. Also, check out our price guide, which makes it extremely easy to find the best deals on Apple products updated daily. Be sure to follow us on social media and we'll see you in the next video.